We have a nice selection of items up in the stash shop today, including some pastel pencils, some Faber-Castell pit pens, and also a nice little selection of paper bundles for your perusal. If you would like to check any of this out for a bargain price, you can head over to the website and you can check out the stash shop there. Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today is quite a special video because it is a tag that is being passed around some of the colourists on YouTube and it is the birthday bonanza tag. I was tagged by Helena from The Colouring Zone. I will leave links to anyone I mention down in the description under the video so please go and check out their channels and let's get a little bit of community spirit here. The creator of this tag was a colour with Dan, who's a uh, very much colourful chap and uh, the questions are quite interesting and it's to do with birthdays. So while we're talking about those things, today I'm jumping back to an unfinished project and that was in Seasons by Hannah Carlson and way back in the autumn we coloured some of these images as part of a tutorial set of videos. Again, I'll leave links to those down in the description if it's something that you maybe want to check out and I'll stick one of them in the end card so you can go straight onto that after this. I decided to stick with the same pencils that we've been using throughout. I'm kind of weird that way. I like everything to be very sort of complete. Um, so it's the Castle Art 120 soft touch pencils I am using and uh, I have them here in this, this big case here. So I thought I would go down to this little fall fog bottle. I thought that would be a nice place to start. So I have already picked out my colours and here they are here. So I'll just give you a moment to check those out if that's something that you might be interested in picking out for yourself or if you've got a different set of pencils you can find similar colours. So the only precursor to this was I did go around all of these items with a grey pencil and gave them a sort of slightly shadowy outline just to soften the black lines, just, just for funsies. And the only other implement that I have with me today is the Tagal Multi Sharpener. This is one of my favourite pencil sharpeners. And because the Castle Art pencils are quite soft, I like to have that set to a number three setting. So that's halfway between a really pointy point and a short stubby point. So in order to keep this sort of foggy feeling, I'm going to go over the entire bottle first with the Naples Yellow Light, which is a very, very pale yellow colour. And it just means when I go back over with some of my other colours, it's going to give it that sort of slightly milky look to it, which helps establish the, the fogginess, but also the fact that there's glass there as well. So we'll just get started with this. Now I've done all the explaining, we can talk about the birthday bonanza tag. So the first question is when is your birthday? My birthday is the 2nd of March. Uh, if for those of you that are into astrology, that makes me a Pisces. And apparently Pisceans are supposed to be very imaginative, creative, but also emotionally aware. And that's traits that I would definitely, uh, you know, I definitely identify with. But there's also traits as well. They're known for, uh, you know, being sort of the phrase I would use is a bit of a space cake. So in their own little dreamland a lot of the time and often don't follow practical routes because, uh, you know, the imagination maybe takes over a bit too much and they don't set realistic goals. I don't know how much of that's true for myself. Um, I consider myself to be a very practical person. And um, yeah, so I... I I don't follow astrology anyway, but I do think it's quite interesting that, that most of the, the Piscean traits do apply in some way. Okay, I'm going to leave the rim of this just now. I'm just not, not entirely sure what I want to do there. So I've got uh, purple, pink and blue here, and this is what I'm going to use for my fog. I'll get started off down the bottom. So the next question is, do you like birthdays? I am a person that absolutely loves birthdays. I think that there's a lot of misery in the world and we often get caught up in our daily grind. And if anyone is anything like me, I'm busy all the time. And I think that birthdays are just such a nice way to celebrate a person and also to show how much you appreciate someone because obviously it's their birthday, notwithstanding sharing a birthday with other people. But, um, it, you know, it's it's just a, a day that you can enjoy and 
not necessarily spoil your loved ones, but it's just a nice way to show appreciation and make someone feel special. And that's something that I really like to do. I, I like to make people feel special. So yeah, I really enjoy birthdays. And plus the world's miserable enough um, without hating birthdays as well. You know, you, can, <laughs> you want to make it as cheery as possible and life should be fun. So yeah, that's it. That's my thoughts on that for sure. I don't have anything planned for my birthday this year. Obviously my birthday has been... And I didn't really have any plans anyway this year. I'm kind of, um, things have changed so much in the last maybe five or ten years. And it's the weather. It used to be that my birthday was, you know, you were you're out the tail end of winter and you were just coming into spring. So the weather was fairly good and you could go out and do stuff. But more recently, especially in the last ten years or so, there's been more than one occasion where I've been snowed in on my birthday. And that started with the Beast from the East, which I think was 2000 and I want to say 16 or 17, 2000, I don't know, 2018? <laughs> I can't remember. But yeah, I was, uh, I was actually, I'd been snowed in for three days at that point, which obviously um, kind of hampered any attempts for birthdays. And in more recent years with COVID and things, I really haven't, <laughs> haven't made any plans at all. In terms of my own birthday, though, uh, that's that's not such a big deal. Um, I, do, I don't like parties for myself. I don't like surprises. I don't like surprise parties. So stuff like that's kind of off the cards for me. But I'm, I'm absolutely fine with it. Like, I really am. Which brings me quite nicely on to the next question is, what's your favourite way to spend your birthday? An excellent birthday for me is when someone else takes over all the sort of menial duties. So not having to cook dinner and not having to walk my dogs. You know, the chores that I normally do every day, just a day to not have to do those things is probably one of the best things that anyone can do for me for my birthday. And I really, really appreciate that. Just to, just a day to take a breather. And interestingly, I have never, ever, ever worked my birthday. Although although I work a lot, I've always had a job. Um, I've never been unemployed for any length of time. And I have never, ever worked a birthday. And I think part of it is because I generally work a lot and then you know when I was when I was employed I'm now self-employed but when I was employed I never took holidays I just didn't take them and I always used some of my holidays around my birthday which is why I've never had to never had to work a birthday so that like a proper day off that's what I would categorize as a as a good birthday is a proper day off and that can be just a quiet day at home maybe a couple of beers with some friends I'm really, I'm really easily pleased when it comes to things like that. I'm, I'm not hard work when it comes to preferences for things like birthdays. But then again, I, because I'm busy a lot of the time, I just appreciate like a simple, quiet life. So yeah, that suits me really, really well. I like it a lot. Just layering up some of these colours here. Oh, that's a bit more interesting. I don't know why I feel like fall fog should be purple and pink, but that's that's just the way we're doing this. What is my favourite birthday memory is the next question. And without a shadow of a doubt, <laughs> I might get someone into trouble here. Uh, <laughs> for my 30th birthday, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to run a half marathon before I turned 30. And I was pretty determined that I was doing it. So I did do it. I, I ran my first half marathon the day before I turned 30. It was just the way the dates fell, which was, that was just actually really cool. But afterwards, uh, once we'd, once we'd raced in the morning and, you know, been for a little disco nap, been for a snooze, the, I had a few family members that ran with me and I had a few family members that met us afterwards and we, we uh, went to a restaurant and had a very nice meal. Um, and at this particular place, there, uh, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was, you know, incredibly upmarket or anything, but it was quite a, quite a nice place. And they brought us uh, the birthday cake. Obviously, the cake was brought out after we'd had our, like, the main part of our meal. And by this point, myself, Mr. Jem, who was not Mr. Jem at that point, he was my boyfriend. We weren't even engaged or anything at that point. 
and uh, we we we'd had a, a fair amount to drink. I think it's uh, that's safe to say we'd you know we were pretty well on. So we'd organised taxis and everything, and you know we had such a good time. And when we were in the taxi on the way home, Mr. Jem's like raking about in his jacket pocket, like his inside pocket. And my parents were in the taxi with us as well. And my mum said to him, what are you, what are you looking for? Have you lost something? And out of his pocket, he pulls this full length um, cake knife. You know, the celebratory ones, like the fancy ones you get at weddings and things. One of those. And uh, he handed it to me and he went, happy birthday. <laughs> So my, my my husband to be stole this cake knife from the establishment where we had where we had our meal, uh, just because it was shiny. Um, he's a bit of a magpie, and uh, decided in his infinite alcoholic state that that would be a make a lovely birthday present for me. <laughs> so we do still have that cake knife. We never returned it. Uh, we moved away shortly after that incident was probably a good thing. And to this day, I still have the that cake knife and it is referred to as the stolen cake knife. So that's it. Uh, that was pretty funny. Um, I didn't think my husband would be into doing stuff like that. And that was, you know, learns a bit of a bit of a dark horse. But yeah, um, so that was fun. <laughs> There's been quite a few other funny incidents, but I think that's probably my favourite. And I think it was just because it was so unexpected. It's not even as if he'd mentioned at any point, oh, that's a nice knife. He just, just appeared with it. I see, the fact that he just sort of presented it out of his pocket in the taxi. I don't even know how he managed to smuggle it out because it's really long. It is a very nice knife, though. So needless to say, now we use it for all sorts of special occasions. It's, uh, that's always part of the celebrations now which is quite funny and uh, we did indeed use it at our wedding as well we took it with us <laughs> and we used it to cut our wedding cake so that that was quite nice that was quite symbolic pink in here i keep calling this pink it's actually lavender light but it, it looks pink to me it looks pink in my eyes the next question is do i share a birthday with any celebrities i share a birthday with loads of celebrities uh, to name but a few, uh, some of my favourites are, uh, first of all, John Bon Jovi, who was born on the 2nd of March, and Rebel Wilson as well, which is, oh, she's a cool girl, so I'm, I'm pretty happy to share a birthday with her. Also, Chris Martin of Coldplay fame, his birthday is the 2nd of March as well. And the honour of all honours, the best person to share a birthday with, Dr. Zeus. And I kid you not, Dr. Zeus was born on the the 2nd of March. Now, if if birthdays do have anything to do with personality traits, etc., well, I think Dr. Zeus kind of sums it up really, doesn't it? <laughs> Another famous face I shared a birthday with is Daniel Craig, who I have to say is probably one of my favourite Bonds. Now, that's probably, that may be a little bit controversial for some people, but uh, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed him as as James Bond. So, and it helps that he's really hot as well. <laughs> so, just saying. So happy to share a birthday with him too. I don't really know what to do about this little bit in here. I think I want, I better sharpen my blue pencil up here. My indigo light. I think this must be a special magical mystical fog because I don't think autumn or fall fog would necessarily be these colours. And saying that, any kind of fog you can trap in a bottle surely has to be magical fog. Eh? Maybe? So justifications for my colour choices here. <laughs> get some violet down in here too. I'll sharpen again. I've got loads of teeny little bits and pieces that I need to get into. So the next birthday question is, what would your dream birthday celebration entail? I pretty much already covered that. As I say, I'm, I'm quite a simple creature when it comes to things like that. Although I do really like getting flowers. That's one of my favourite things. You know, people say to you, what would you like for your birthday? I don't really want for much, but I do enjoy when someone picks out some lovely flowers. I know they don't last long as well, which, you know, people will say that they're a waste, but again, it's one of those things I don't, you know, I don't buy fresh flowers very often and it's not something that's, you know, a, a sort of permanent fixture, especially in the cave. So it's, uh, it's all, I always think it's really nice to get flowers. 
plus as well they're cheery and anything that's cheery makes me happy so yeah I suppose a dream birthday day would be a day where the sun was shining now again at the beginning of March it may not be very warm but a day that the sun was shining and being able to get up and drink a cup of tea outside even if I had to wrap up I would love to do that that's a nice way to start the day and then after that I would really like to sit and read a book in peace and quiet and just have like an hour to sit and read outside. <laughs> See, when I'm imagining this in my head, I'm just thinking of being absolutely freezing. <laughs> the, 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 the northeast of Scotland is not kind to us at the beginning of March, unless we're really, really lucky. But yeah, so spend, spend a little bit of the morning reading a book, drinking some tea would be really nice. And have someone come and cook me lunch in the house. Get some good scran in and then go and do like an activity or something, uh, preferably something outside. Something that I do really want to do, which I've noticed now that everything's opened back up again, um, there is a place fairly close to us that do it and that's to go hatchet throwing. I like things like that or, uh, you know, I would like, I would go archery or quad biking or, you know, just a, a really good activity. Get a group of people together and go and do that. And then finish off by going somewhere really, really good for food. I absolutely love spicy food. I love Mexican food. I love Indian food. So something like that. Again, a meal with, you know, not a huge group of people, but some, some friends. And then obviously a, an evening with Mr. Jack Daniels as well. That would that's a, sounds like a pretty good birthday to me. That's uh, That would be satisfactory. Mmm, <laughs> Jack Daniels. I love how all these pencils blend together. Makes me happy. I'm gonna put a little spot colour in there as well. Kind of using this light lavender as like a blender pencil almost here. Glad to have my magical fall fog. So I've got the warm grey light here and I'm gonna use this to create like a fog around the fog. Does that make sense? And this is gonna be quite delicate. I don't know how well we're gonna see this on the camera, but. I'm just going to take it all the way around the edge here. I really like the next tag question, which is, if you could invite one celebrity to your birthday, who would it be and why? I would, there's, there's two, am I allowed to? If it has to be someone that's alive, I would love to invite Stephen King. I used to do quite a lot of writing and Stephen King's books are basically my, what I would call a comfy pair of slippers. See if I don't know what I want to read or I just want an easy read but something I know that I'll enjoy, I always reach for a Stephen King book. And he is a very, very prolific writer. I mean, he spits out books like nobody's business and 99.9% .9 of them are you know, they're, they're good quality stories. Everybody has a, a stinker every once in a while, but generally his work is very consistent and obviously he's had a, a long, illustrious career and he's had loads of practice. But it takes a certain type of mind to be able to come up with these stories, to come up with original characters and original concepts. And I would just really like to pick his brains because his imagination is, is amazing. And I think I could have some very, very interesting conversations with them. Very interesting. If I could pick someone that is no longer with us, I would pick Freddie Mercury because I have a million questions for that man. Uh, Freddie Mercury was the lead singer of a band called Queen, which were really popular in the 70s and the 80s. And he has one of the best singing ranges uh, of his time. And he was just a, he was just an absolute character, but there was a lot of things that people didn't know about him that didn't actually come out until after he died. And I would really love him to see the way the world has changed in terms of accepting people's sexual preferences, but also the openness of, you know, gender fluidity now as well, because I think he would really, really have liked it. And I, th I think Mr. Mercury would really enjoy the world and... Uh, and plus as well, I just think he would be absolutely amazing to have at a party. <laughs>
Okay, so I'm going to go on to this little tag now. So I'm going back to this Naples yellow, Naples yellow light. It helps if I can say it. And I want to put a couple of layers of this down. So I'm not necessarily pressing hard here, but I do want to give it a bit of uh, give it a bit of pasty, as my husband would say, which just means you know put a bit of effort into it. Apologise if you can hear what sounds like gunshots going off in the background. It's not gunshots, it's a gas cannon to keep uh, crows away from the crops that are coming through. I don't think the mic will pick it up, but I just don't want anybody to think that I'm, I'm uh, under any <laughs> any sort of duress here. <laughs> so let's pop a little bit of this in here. So this is the ochre and it's just, uh, just to give this a little bit of colour. I'm not really... Um, I'm not really colouring in the whole tag here. I'm just jumping between that yellow ochre and the Naples. Is this, these pencils blend really well so we can get a good smoosh of colour going. Okay, so the next question is what would your dream birthday meal be? So I kind of touched on the fact that I really like spicy food. I don't know if I have one specific thing. Um, unfortunately, I, like, I just like food. <laughs> I think that something... Um, Something spicy, definitely. But I have this thing, and it is something that I would like to rectify. Uh, this is kind of like a long-standing joke with me and my, my friends as well. Oh, when, uh, when I got married, which was 2018, by the way, this is not recently. When I got married, f when we went on my Hindu or bachelorette, bachelor <laughs> bachelorette party, uh, we went down to Glasgow. So I travelled down on the train with my, my maid of honour, my closest friend, and we met up with everyone else in Glasgow. And before we met up with everyone, my best friend and I, we, we decided it would be a good idea to align our stomachs before we started because there was going to be a lot of drinking involved. So just across from Central Station in Glasgow, there is a burrito shop and my friend and I went in there and thought, right, a burrito, that's a great idea. That'll sort us right out and we'll be ready for an afternoon of fun. And that was, I was really, really hungry as well. I hadn't had any breakfast. And that was the best burrito I have ever had in my life. And since then, I've been hankering for another one. And I haven't spent enough time in Glasgow to go and get one. And I have tried others and nothing has compared. So I'm still nearly four years later. <laughs> I'm still trying to fulfil this need for, for a burrito that was that good. So I may have to rectify that at some point. I might just make a trip to Glasgow to just go and get a burrito. I don't even know if the place is still there. I really hope that it is. But I have never, since that day, I've been jonesing for a really good burrito and it's just not happened for me. <laughs> so maybe I need a burrito for my birthday. <laughs> Right, I'm going to move on to this cork here. And for that, I'm going to stick with the yellow ochre. But I've also got a burnt sienna. And I have got the sepia as well, so we're going to do a little bit of work on that and try and get some texture. And obviously there's some drawn in for us already, but we're going to build on that a little bit. I'm going to make it look cool. So the next question is talking about exotic destinations. If I could have a birthday in an exotic destination. Um, for those of you that know me well, you'll know that the answer is Mauritius. Uh, so it's one of my favourite places in the world, it really is. It's absolutely beautiful and that would be amazing to spend a birthday there. I don't know what the weather would be like in March right enough, but I'm sure we could uh, we could investigate that, that wouldn't be a problem. I would actually like to go back to Mauritius. Mr Gem and I were talking about it uh, for our fifth wedding anniversary, which is next year, not this year. And uh, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. It's, the flights are so expensive. I mean, the flights to Mauritius are expensive anyway, but um, I don't know if it's something we're going to be able to do. But yeah, I can imagine a birthday in Mauritius. That would be that would be extra special. <laughs> extra, extra special. I have a feeling there would be a lot of rum involved because that's what happens <laughs> in Mauritius. Rum, 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 rum. I didn't even know I liked rum that much until I went to Mauritius. Never been a huge fan of rum. Uh, I'm much more of a fan of rum now. The next question's probably my favourite. And that is, has anything hilarious ever happened on your birthday? 
There, there is no specific hilarity for any one of my birthdays, but we do have um, a, a running joke that Mr. Jem is really good at ruining my birthday, and that stemmed from a, a couple of years ago. He he was supposed to be starting a new job, and he actually left on my birthday to start his new job, which was like a four hour drive away. Um, so yeah, that that kind of ruined my birthday a little bit. And subsequent years, there was loads of disasters. But the one that sticks out the most was my parents had come up to visit and that we were living here at that point. And my parents were coming to visit and we were supposed to be going out for, for lunch for my, for my birthday. And Mr. Jem had gone out to work to tend to his cows and do all the bits and pieces. And he came in about two hours before we were due to go and meet my parents to go for lunch. And there was blood running down his hand. And his words, and I always know when something serious has happened because he says to me, don't worry, love, but, and I'm like, oh no. And what had happened was he was working with one of the bulls in a pen and he had the bull had pushed against him and basically trapped his fingers in between the hinges on the gate and then dragged his hand. So he uh, they basically mangled his pinky finger. And it, from where I was standing, you know, we're used to having accidents and things like that. You know, things happen. And I'm pretty good now at assessing whether or not we can patch somebody up or whether it's, you know, stitches and hospital kind of stuff. And I took one look at his hand and I was like, you're going to have to go to accident and emergency. So obviously I was concerned about him, but he didn't seem that bothered about it. And I, I think it's just a man thing personally, but, you know, if he can have an arm hanging off and he's like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then the minute they get a sniffle, like cold or flu or something, they're dying and, you know, the world's ended and it's so terrible. Um, so it was one of those he's like ah, it's merely a flesh wound and I was like no you're good you're bleeding a lot you have to go to the hospital so I ended up taking him to accident emergency leaving him there in the waiting room with his hand and going to get my parents and going for lunch and then going back for him uh, but it turned out he needed surgery on that hand to to put him back together it wasn't just a simple case of like stitching him up so <laughs> I went and had lunch with my parents and then went back to the hospital and picked him up. And when he came out, he, he said himself, he was this was much later on and obviously wasn't allowed to eat anything because he was going to be put under general anaesthetic. So by the time he came out later on that afternoon, he was absolutely starving. So we ended up going back to the restaurant that I'd had lunch with my parents in just so that Mr. Jem could get something to eat. And uh, do you know that way, like, the waiting staff are kind of giving us a bit of a funny look and Mr. Jem comes in with his whole hand, like, bandaged up, you know, like a boxer. And uh, did you know that way, just looked at them, I was like, it's a long story. <laughs> it's fine. So we ended up eating two meals in the same restaurant on my birthday. So since then, it's been a standing joke that Mr. Jem's really good at ruining my birthday. His hand healed beautifully, though, and if I ever meet the surgeon that put him back together, I'm going to give him a medal and shake his hand. Because you, if you look at his scar, and he's got quite a nasty scar that runs from his nail all the way down his knuckle. But unless someone points it out to you, you wouldn't actually note it. You know, it's not... It's not noticeable straight away. So I just think that's the craziest thing. Like, I really do. It is absolutely crazy. I've got primary blue here, and I'm just going to accent some of these little... I assume that... Well, bubbles. Does, does fog have bubbles? It does now. So a nice pointy point on there for that. So the final question for this birthday bonanza tag is, if you could be gifted one superpower for your birthday, what would it be? That's a really difficult one, but I've given it a little bit of thought. And I would love to be able to fly for the day. I'd have to take a camera with me though, and I would go soaring over lots of tall buildings and open fields and take some photographs so I had loads of stuff to draw and paint. I think that would be awesome. Even just for the day, that would make me really happy. Okay, I'm just going to cut. I think this is just like a little bit of, um, I want to say like string or something. So I'll, uh, I'll use the burnt sienna here. So yeah, I think that would be absolutely awesome. I mean, there's loads of superpowers you could wish to have. Another one that I would really like is to be able to cure 
kids with terminal illnesses. How cool would it be to go on your birthday and go and visit children in, you know, in, in wards that are getting treated for leukemia and, you know, all these kind of things and just be able to take it away for them? That would be a pretty awesome superpower as well. That would be really cool. You know, you could use your superpower to feel as if you're doing some good in the world. That would be, that would be nice. I'd like that too. Maybe I like that one better than being able to fly. People will be like, what did you do on your birthday? Well, yeah, just um, just made some really sick kids better. Or, I don't know if that really counts as a superpower, but being able to rehome all the dogs in shelters. There's a lot of that after lockdown. And it would be really nice to just be able to wave a magic wand and have, have little doggies in their forever homes. That would be really cool. It's amazing what, you know, how you end up thinking about things like this. Right, I'm going to take the primary blue now and I'm also going to take the, the grey. And I'm just going to make some marks on this bottle. I might actually pick out a darker grey, I think. I think I'm just going to go next door. It was the warm grey light I was using. And I think I'm going to go to the Davies grey. Who's Davy? <laughs> and just put a few accents on here. Yeah, so I'm going to tag a couple of people under this video in the description and hopefully they will take up the the challenge of the birthday bonanza tag. I think that would be really, really cool. It's, it's actually quite interesting and it's nice to do something a little bit different, you know, with your, with your colouring videos because I do do quite a lot of chatty videos, we know this. Um, so it's nice to have a little bit of subject matter to talk about. Because birthdays aren't a thing that I would normally you <laughs> normally chat about too much. So yeah, this this has been pretty cool. I've had really good fun and my my choice of colouring has has suited this perfectly. It's just brought us to a nice a nice conclusion and a nice close here. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Oh, you know, just something that a little bit different. I'm going to take a wee zoom out now and you can see how this page is coming along. I think at this point I am going to finish off this page in my own time and post it on Instagram because we're getting to that point now where there's not much left to do. Just want to thank you all very much for watching. Thanks for coming and hanging out. I hope you've enjoyed yourself and I'll see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. So have a great day everyone and check out the other videos on the birthday bonanza tag and enjoy other people's funny stories about birthdays too. Have a great day everyone. Bye for now.